Okay, gamers, serious question. If you're not playing into the zone, what are you doing with your life? Think about that. Hey, everybody. Games of James. James here. I'm James, you're you. Now that introductions are over, let's get to the games. Today we're looking at Into the Zone. This is a game that is more stalker than the stalker video games. Yes, this is a game that is really based off of the movie stalker and the novel Roadside Picnic with the video game stalker thrown into the mix. I know it's confusing, but if you're into this sort of genre... You already know what I'm talking about. So, let's get going. So, for $15 at Exalted Funeral, get you a PDF of about 40 pages and a plain text version of it as well. Uh, so, just to full disclosure, I did not receive a promo copy. I am not affiliated with any websites, authors, or companies. I bought this with my own money, uh, and I'm reviewing it for you. <laughs> Um, but with that being said, $15 gets you this. It is currently on sale at Exalted Funeral. Exalted Funeral seems to be the only website which carries this fine game. Um, so let's look at what this game actually is. Um, so this is brought to us by our friends at Roundtable Games. This is created by Brendan Carlson and it starts off with this page of weapons, weapon rules, uh, vehicles, stuff that you can buy, uh, <clears throat> armor, weather. Um, so this is a very good summary. If you are a running this game, you'll be referring to these a lot, um, these first few pages quite a bit. Um, I, I like what they do with the weapons because you have the special rules for it. Um, like Soviet made makes it means that it's more uh, v uh, um, means it's more durable. Uh, if you are setting your zone someplace outside of the Soviet Union, you would probably uh, change that. Um, but you have things like explosive, experimental, piercing, scoped. It adds flavor to the weapons. That they're just not a stat that you have. Uh, you know, it is something that there is something to it. I really like that. Um, you have your armor. You know, they don't really get into details. Armor. You know, you roll dice to reduce the damage. Um, you know, with fuck all <laughs> mean nothing. Um, so yeah, uh, you get these little great blips of artwork throughout, um, you know, they, they fit the theme, nothing like spectacular. You're not going to print it out and frame it, but it, it's good. Um, we got the inspirational media, uh, roadside picnic, stalker, the movie, uh, stalker, the video game series. Uh, Annihilation, Metro 2033, Escape from Tarkov. I don't know what that game is. I got to look it up. Um, but yeah, so you're a stalker, which is someone that goes into these zones, these zones that, you know, crazy things have happened within it. You get these artifacts. People go in one way. They come out changed. Um, the Flash changed everything. No one knows what causes it. It's been 2D 10 years since The Flash. There are two D6 zones across the Earth. You have come a far away to this particular zone. Um, the zone, they don't explain what causes the zone. That is ultimately up to you. Here is what people think that causes the flash in the zones. Uh, visitation from aliens, an experiment gone wrong. Um, it's natural. Uh, breaking of the seals, you know, apocalypse. Fun stuff, right? Um, but you have this thing called the sphere, uh, which is something that is, everyone is hunting for. There is different rumors as to what it actually is, but they don't explain it to you. Again, that is up for the game master, which is in this is called the overseer. Um, but here are the character classes, vagabonds, scientists, skeptics, soldiers, and pilgrims. Each one wants to do a different thing with the sphere. 
or the S-Sphere, or however you want to pronounce it. Uh, they each have all their agendas. So when you are making your character, this game really, really focuses in on the role-playing, where you are in a role and your character has some predefined um, goals in mind. So again, like a skeptic wants to expose it. Skeptics are your like paranoid conspiracy theorists. They want to find out what it is and show it to the world. Scientists want to study it. Soldiers want to destroy it. Pilgrims want to worship it. Um, and the character classes don't like each other. Um, some like other roles. Others don't like each other at all. The game master uh, will tell you once you have cho once your role has been assigned or chosen, however you want to do it. You are not to tell your party members what your role actually is. You need to keep that a secret. Uh, that could be hard because certain com certain um, roles come with certain equipment. Each role is available to roll has ability to roll one particular die check. Um, <clears throat> so if you have astute players, they may pick up on that and pick up what on your role actually is. Um, but they also, one, tell you as an overseer, you can mix up starting equipment and remix it and give people different stuff so that people will not know right off the bat. Like, oh, you have a contamination suit. You are a scientist. Um, you know, you can have, you can change all of that. Uh, and they tell you to actively do that. But there's also other tells. So like vagabonds are usually people who have been released from prison and their tells. Some of them might have like a prison gang tattoo. Um but I, it, it's an interesting story mechanic because the game actually tells you to start pitting your characters against one another and make them paranoid. Um, so here we go. Get to the center, find the sphere, fulfill the density, uh, your destiny, trust no one. So how do you generate the character? Okay, so this is, you have four stats, muscle, prowess, and smarts, and grit, which is used to generate some secondary stats such as your health, uh, your stress levels, etc. You assign them ranks. Each rank comes uh, gets you know paired up with a corresponding die. This game system, every time you need to make a check, you need to roll two dice, which is determined by the overseer. Will tell you, okay, you want to uh, roll your muscle and your prowess. You roll those two dice and you try to roll under at or under a target number. Um, sometimes they'll, they'll tell you to do a pure check, which is like, you know, for muscle, you roll, you know, if your muscle was rank A, you would roll 2d6. Um, some such as combat tests are predetermined. They will always tell you, you need to roll these two dice. Um, so you assign stats, you pick two stats that are rank C, uh, pick one stat that is a D and one that is at E. Target numbers will always start at six and they go up or down depending on the overseer. Um, and, you know, here we go. It tells you what that is. Um, but what's interesting is, is that there's a lot of different outcomes that you can happen if one dice rolls the target number or below. It's a minor success, uh, but something goes awry. Um if both dice are rolled, it's a major success and everything goes as expected. If one rolls a roll, one and one, and the other success, it's a critical success, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, what's really interesting is if one's a success and the other is the highest number of the dice possible, you have a dramatic action which changes the scene dramatically. That is up to the overseer to decide what to happen uh, in the game example that they have you know they had someone who ducked for cover and ended up knocking a light post on them um you know and they go through that uh, you know it's pretty cool but the overseer has to determine what that is um group of stalkers is called a hunting party so you need to roll a d10 and figure out what you are do not tell anyone your true role so in theory you can have <clears throat> a party of three bag of vagabonds and them not knowing each other right off the bat, which is can be fairly interesting. Uh, excuse me as I take a drink. Uh, the winter air. So, you know, you have the vagabond, tells you what to do. Uh, one thing I don't like about this uh, PDF 
is that it is given to you in a single page and you know you have this particular page you kind of like looking at it like what the hell so if you're looking at it on the pdf you know um and may uh one thing i need to clarify let me go back when you purchase this for the $15, you get a print copy and the PDF. It's not just for the PDF. Um, you know, so you have the equipment for each class. Um, really interesting flavor stuff. Again, you got some really killer artwork in here. Uh, but here's your finishing touches, your max health. So you roll, you have 15 and then you roll your muscle die. And then... Subtract that die roll to a minimum of five. Your max stress, the same thing. Um, I know from the text only, this could be a little bit confusing. I actually had to reach out to the creator of the game to get clarification on that. Um, improvement. There is some things that you need XP to improve. Each class has its own way to earn XP, such as like... You know, vagabonds gain experience when they sell artifacts, which we'll get to in a second. Um, but you can also use experience to lower uh, certain things. <clears throat> so you can lower your die, or, you know, increase your die one step. You can reduce your stress uh, and you can reduce your exposure. So now every time your character comes in and out of a... Uh, of the zone, they get an exposure, uh, and you know, their exposure reaches a certain level. You have to start the scene if they get a anomaly, a mutation, uh, and those mutations are pretty damn horrific. Um, so you might need to use your experience to lower your exposure. Um, so here we go. Each time you emerge from the zone, you gain one permanent exposure. You cannot reduce this aside from expending XP. Then there's also like temporary exposure, which you can, it, it goes, dissipates naturally. Um, but like you get these afflictions and man, they are horrific. Um, combat, again, there is some things in this that are not readily apparent. And I had to reach out to the creator. So like attacking, you know, automatic. I, I didn't know what 1 plus 1d2 dice is. That is, if you use an automatic weapon, you roll one damage dice, and then you can add up to two others, depending on your die roll, to more than one target. Um, but it's straight, pretty straightforward. You know, nothing earth-shattering here. Defending is the same way. Um, you know, players always roll to defend. Uh, as opposed to having a creature attacking them, you know, they, you know, you just assume the attack is successful and a player either has to try to dodge it or run into cover. Um, the thing that is really nice about this is that you get to choose what to do. And so like smart characters have a chance to defend, um, and muscle characters have a chance to, you know, that may not be quick, equally have a chance to defend. Um, so, yeah. And then we're talking about excursions, uh, you know, the temporary and permanent excursion. Supplies that you have are rated as food, energy, medication, and reloading. Uh, this is very abstract. You don't really need to go into detail other than know that your supplies will fall into one of those categories. Um, <clears throat> you have to roll, it's almost like a usage die from like Black Hack. Uh, if you do a bad roll, you know, you have to reduce it until it's depleted. Um, same thing with energy. Energy is any device that needs to be powered. Um, they talk a little bit about artifacts here. Artifacts here are things, they're almost like magic items. Um, People on the outside want them, so you can go in and, you know, your, your character goes out and sells them. When they sell them, you get abstract, it's called resources. Um, stress and panic, your characters can get stressed out. Um, when they reach a certain threshold, they have to roll a stress test. Um, we, we've seen this type of mechanic before. Nothing earth-shattering here, it's just fun to have it in there. 
um, afflictions. These are truly horrific. You really don't want to have afflictions. There is gear that can help you avoid getting exposure, but geez, some of these are just horrible. Uh, um, you know, feral attraction, wild animals think you're food. <laughs> uh, if you get have to roll for another affliction and you roll the same one, it gets worse. Yeah, this is like, I mean, some of this crap comes right out of like, you know, Twilight Zone episodes. Like, it, it is pretty, pretty brutal. Uh, some of them are, 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 you know, like, oh, that that's unfortunate, but like, you keep going, you know, you luck out. Um, other ones though, it's like, you know, uh, your, your character is just doomed for getting that affliction. Um, and afflictions cannot be cured. They said some doctors might be able to help you, but probably not going to happen. Uh, here are some of the artifacts that we were talking about. A lot of these common artifacts really have no use other than their interesting items and that you can sell them. Uh, when you sell them, you need to roll on this chart to see what the buyer is going to offer you. Uh, when you get to more rare artifacts, they do more things. Uh, however, using these artifacts and having them on you gives you exposure, which you don't want. There's ways to contain them and use them without getting exposed or have them on you without getting exposure. Um, but, you know... Those are very expensive in terms of resources, you know. But, you know, these rare artifacts, some of them are pretty cool. You have to determine whether you want to give them up and get more resources or what have you. These are anomalies. Anomalies are, if you ever played any of the stalker games, these are like the random happenings that happen, quote-unquote, in the zone. Same thing with the... Um, Novel Roadside Picnic. These are just strange occurrences that happen. Um, you know, if Anomaly is in a zone, you roll to see what happens. Um, some of these are whimsical. Others are horrifying. Uh, most are horrifying. Um, yeah. Uh, creatures. These are some of the stuff that you can encounter. You know, usually they are... Some of them are human, some of them are not human, some of them are, you know. These are the stereotypical creatures that you see in any of these, you know, weird post-apocalyptic uh, stalker Metro 2033 games, you know. Uh, he's not really thinking outside the box here, but they work, they're thematic, they're great. Um... So when you're designing your zone, he actually gives you a great way to design the zone. I really love this. So essentially you draw 12 circles. You number them 1 through 12. Each circle gets divided into four. <coughs> uh, each section of a circle is a quote-unquote scene. That is where you have your encounters. Uh, but you get to roll what type of sector something is. It's urban, it's forest, and then you connect them together. Uh, when you are connecting them together, the there's two that you have to set aside. One is the cordon. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that. Uh, the cordon, which is like a rest area for stalkers. Like, like I know in the stalker video game is kind of like your starting area, but this is a place where you can go in the zone or in the hinterland of the zones and get, you know, help, What have different wonderful encounters, you know. Um, but, and then you also have one that is the deep zone where the sphere lies, uh, which is sphere 16. Um, so you roll... And you connect them. It tells you how long it takes to travel between them. It tells you how long uh, you need to completely, uh, you know, look at a uh, section. You know, so it's great. Here is the Game Master section, uh, which is your random encounter tables. They give you your example of play. The problem with the example of play is that the example of play doesn't match some of the rules. Um 
you know, when they talk about my shotgun has the annihilating perk and it does triple damage, uh, you see here he rolls and they multiply that by three. In the actual rules on the chart, it says you add dice damage. So you actually just roll, add additional dice to roll. So there was a little discrepancy there. Again, not a deal breaker. Uh, this is probably one of the... Um, probably their first game, and it's a forgivable sin. You know, we, we've all been there. Um, after you publish something, you're like, ah, oh, crap, you know. We have role tips here, the telltale signs that I was originally talking about in the role relationships. Uh, gives you advice on running the zone, so in case you have a game master, you are the forever game master of your group, but you're not familiar with all this source material. Uh, it tells you how to run the zones, um, which can be very helpful. Um, you have your final tips. Uh, you know, never reveal anything. Fudge every roll. Embrace PvP. <laughs> Get your. If you have players that love to kill each other, like I used to play with a group of people that just loved to annihilate each other. Uh, you know, this is for them. Um, make them question what is real and do not let them get to the center of the zone. And if you do, you gotta be prepared to define what the sphere is. Um, you know, we have the character sheet. This is like my biggest pet peeve of this PDF is that the character sheet is split on two pages. It's like, dude, just, just put it all on one page. Uh, here's the back zone with another wonderful, wonderful drawing. So that is it. That is it for now, gamers. Um, check out my other videos. Get this game and play it. You'll love it. It's it's a wonderful game. I, I cannot tell you enough how much this is, uh, how wonderful this is, or how much I like it, and how much the um, the the zone you know um, generation is such a unique and wonderful mechanic uh until then go forth and be awesome